Welcome to the Allison Bramlett Podcast. So glad you're joining us today. Like, subscribe, share, review, um, let everyone know that they need to listen to. And I am joined today by my dear friend, by our worship pastor here at Covenant Church, Laura. Laura um, gets to put up with me on a regular basis. How is that, Laura, for you? It's amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes maybe. So today I want to talk um, a little bit about Ephesians 4 and 5. We're really not going to dive in that. I want to hit some points but that talk about maybe being in unity, about relationships, maybe having heart checks. And recently we had a get-together, and one of the things we talked about is really breaking cycles. And I believe when you're a cycle breaker, really sometimes you get hurt first. Um, you're the first one to take the hit. And then the people after you don't really know what you did. They don't know what what happened in life because the generations come behind you, they get to live from the benefit of what you've done. Really, maybe for the person that starts the business, takes all the, you know, goes in, does the investment, for those that come up behind you, they just kind of get to live off the the benefits of that. Or, you know, when you buy the home, all the children that live in the house with you, they don't know the the hard work that went in that same thing with a cycle breaker. And I was thinking about Joseph yeah. and I thought about how he broke things in his life. And um, when he was a cycle breaker that he became unrecognizable to his family, but they were still recognizable to him. And I think all the time, how a lot of times we are powerless over how we get wounded, but we're not helpless. Right. And we're not powerless over how we get healed. There's healing in our DNA, and we can do heart checks. And so I think about your life. You've had to break some cycles. Yes. And um, we talked recently about how you always say, you're not upset about the struggle. Yeah. You say, um, recently you said, you didn't, you think that it makes you who you are. So what what's one of the things maybe in your life that you are um, thankful that you've went through that's made you who you are today that maybe has been maybe surprising to someone listening today and i know i'm putting you on the spot because yes, we don't so, we don't practice for this this just comes yeah I, I this is not even in my notes just to let you know well one thing i want to say when you were just talking about breaking cycles you think about uh pushing the wagon up the hill yeah you know when you break the cycle the work is pushing the wagon up the hill but then when you get to the top being able to enjoy the ride down yeah so you know, good that that person being the person that breaks the cycle but for me i would probably say um oh gosh you did put me on the spot um and it's good i think even everyone listening today we've all broken some cycles or maybe there's a cycle you want to break something you want you're thinking it's time to put a stop to that what are something and something you've been waiting on and taking that first plunge you take that first hit what's something maybe in your family in your life that you took a first hit on um probably maybe negative thought process i love that um always continually striving for faith yeah you know keep believing no matter what you're facing on a daily basis yes you know um it's so easy in the in the day that we live in, the time that we live yeah. in, it's just to take the negative route. It's easy. It's easier to take the negative route, but but to fight for the positive, to fight for you know the to always keep our eyes focused mm -hmm. on Jesus and maybe that's uh, is that what you're asking? Yeah, it is because <laughs> I believe anyone can criticize. Yeah, only the anointed can pro prophesy. And what does that mean? Critic criticizing, crit being critical comes naturally. I believe you have to break the cycle and learn how to prophesy. Absolutely. And you've learned to prophesy. Yes. That's really what you're talking about because, okay, so you have a ministry called Strength to Smile. Mm -hmm. And how did that start? So really it came from a conference that I was speaking at one weekend, uh, sharing with ladies, you know, just the testimony of things that I've been through in my life. And really cool thing that the ladies had done that weekend, they had given every lady uh, a certain number of like postcards and what they did was you would take one postcard and write something about each lady and then they would take and compile the cards and give it to the person 
Yeah. Does that make sense what yeah. I'm saying? So every lady had one card for me and they would write one thing about me and then they would take all my cards and put them on a key ring for the weekend. When the weekend was over, I got all the cards that everybody had written about me. Mm -hmm. And so when I got my key ring full of cards, everything that everybody had written about me, all 25 ladies, every card said, your smile has inspired me this weekend. You know, through all of your struggle, through everything that you have done this weekend, it was your smile that has, you know, that has really inspired me. And so even through when I was in the hospital with Scott and things mm -hmm. like that, people would say, man, when you would take pictures, you would still smile. You know, even in your picture, you would still smile. And so I got was to it a looking, fake smile. Um, I'm curious. Or do you feel I, like, or do you think it was okay. a God grace smile? I'm curious. I'm asking. I'm going to say God grace smile. Okay. I'm 90, asking. I'm going to say also 95% of the time. Uh-huh. Genuine. Yeah. That's what I'm asking you. But Gen there are, there are 5% that I'd have to press through and say, okay, okay, I'm going to smile in the middle of adversity. Okay. And so I just started seeking out scripture and thinking, okay, what, what is it? Because that is what identifies me. Mm -hmm. It really is. That's what people say about me all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I got to thinking. So you've smiled by faith. Yes. Yep. Smile by faith. And then I would think, Lord, you know, we stay so drained, so, you know, loss of strength all the time. And I think my smile is a, a sign of my joy mm -hmm. and my strength comes from the Lord. And so the joy of the Lord is my strength and that's where my smile comes from. And so that's where I kind of got that. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So the strength greater is he that is in me yes. than he that's in the world than what I'm facing. That's right. And so rather than praying for your battle to go away yes you decided to be like david and run to your giant that's right talking yeah. trash that's right with a smile on your <laughs> that's face that's right that's right <laughs> i mean since and i i do know that you do that still yeah and um mm -hmm. i really believe that's a heart check yeah it is and when you really start looking into things like that you start realizing hey that it takes more muscles to frown in yeah. your face than it does to smile it really is easier. You can smile at somebody when you're walking in the door of Walmart and change mm -hmm. their whole day. You know, just It does little change an atmosphere. It does. Your smile changes an atmosphere. And I think one thing I do know is that you change atmospheres all the time. You your smile has brought great joy to me. It's brought great peace to my own life. It's brought encouragement. It brings faith. And um not only are you a great smiler, but you're a worshiper. And um, what I love, though, is worship is not about singing. And I, I really I want to say this. And um, I'm, Ephesians 4 and 5 is about walking in unity. It's about um, knowing really it's, it's, it's so much about spiritual gifts. It's about being a new man. There are so many great things about just the word of God. It's about walking in love, it's about being in the light, having wisdom. And I have so much I was going to get into. And then it goes on about. I don't know, the whole armor of God in Ephesians 6, but I really feel like I'm supposed to talk about this instead. So, hey, you can read Ephesians 4, 5, and 6 <laughs> on your own. Read the Bible. Um, I really want to talk about worship because a lot of times my dad's a worshiper, you're a worshiper. I really believe I'm a worshiper. Yes. Even though I can't sing. And we all know that if you know me. But a lot of times people that have really good voices, they're like, oh, worship is where I have my breakthrough. But worship is a lifestyle. And I actually believe if you're saved, you're all, we all are worshipers. And whatever you give your time to, your energy to, is what you worship. Yes. Is that is that okay? To, do you agree yes, with me on 100%. that? Yes, 100%. But you choose to let your worship be to King Jesus. And because of that, because he's your source, it's where you draw your strength from. So right. how do you really worship? I worship, gosh, in my quiet times. Mm -hmm. Lord, even if I can walk outside and just hear the birds singing. And when I hear the birds singing, I think even the little sparrows, that God cares so much about them. Mm -hmm. That causes me to want to say, Lord, Father, your, your greatness is just amazing. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's a way to worship him. Or even if I go to the beach and I watch how the waves are rolling in and I think about the vast greatness of how, of God's goodness and how, you know, just things like that. Um, 
when I'm alone in the car and a song comes on and I start really dwelling on the words and, mm -hmm. and then I start thinking about the goodness of God and what he means to me and yeah. throughout my whole life, how I'm in my right mind yeah. and I'm not, which is Crazy. a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, when I've had yeah. a night with Ansley mm -hmm. and I can mm -hmm. get up, you know, and I can still smile and yeah. I can still be in my right mind and say, God, you, he's so good to us, you know, yeah. and just realizing that. Gosh, and you are, I mean? you are a worship leader, but I'm saying that's part of it. But worship's way deeper than that. Much that's my deeper. point. Man, what I do on the platform, it is not what, what I do in front of people. Gosh, that's the my, overflow of your cup. That's, that's right. what my mom always, yes. Pastor Jackie always says, that's people sipping from your saucer. Right. But that's not where it really comes from. Right. That's the that's the overflow. That's just those intimate moments with him, those private yeah. times with him. And so I know to me too, it the word does not return void. You are deep in the word. Yeah. Cause I, God inhabits the praise of, of his people, but it's the word of God. And one thing I love about you is you spend time in intimacy with the word of God. You you go into the word. And even the worship that you do, even the songs you listen to, you make sure that they're feeding and yeah. they're on the word of God because that's important to you. And even yeah. the songs you write or the things y'all do, it's about the word. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we get caught too much in our feelings and we're not enough in the word. And so um, I find that you're really deep in those things. So yeah. how do you how do you balance, let's say this, um, a long time in the word? You got to make it a priority. Okay. I mean, you, you can't, I, I don't know that there is a, gosh, I don't think that there is a, uh, a way. I don't, what am I trying to say? Um, you, you just, you have to do it. Yeah. You, yeah, I guess you have to help me out. Here. No, I, I think, I, I think mean, it's a choice. Like, yeah, it is a choice. So people it's all the like, time are like, oh, because of what you do, I believe that it's spend time in the yes. works easy for you. No, no, it's not. It's, not. it's I just want it to say not. it is it is still a choice and a the enemy never wants anyone to have time in the word of God. That's right. And um it is still a choice to spend time with you know, it's easy to find time to listen to worship music. It's easy I'm sorry, I, or at least I yeah. you can do but to spend time in the word of God, which is what transforms you. Yeah. I, that's where the battle is it, for me. It all boils down to you make time for what's a priority to yes. you. What's important to you, you make time for. You do. so. And so I know for me, I have to really work to spend time in the Word, even though I love it. And once I get in it, I'm so grateful for yeah. it. But I, I still have to really prioritize that. And I see you do that. Yeah. I see you grab your moments yeah. in the Word. And I think that that's really where a lot of your strength comes from. And even when I think you've been disappointed with some outcomes, you still ran to the word. Yeah. You've still let the Lord be your strong tower. Yeah. And your rock. And just because you've been disappointed with outcomes, you've not let yourself become disappointed with him. You know, I had somebody ask me the other day, they said, just random question. Yeah. They said, can I ask you, and you be honest? And I said, sure. They said, have you ever really been angry with God? Have you ever really been mad at God? And I said, I think that I can honestly say that I have, I've not been mad at him. Mm -hmm. And I guess I say that because you just, you have to get to a place to where you, you trust the heart of your father. So good. And I know that his heart for me is good things. And if I say that I trust his heart and I really do trust his heart, then I know that even though it wasn't the way that I wanted it to turn out, he knows better for me. Is that Proverbs 3, 5, trust yes. in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not, not on your own understanding. Yeah. And I mean, we live in such a time where we want our own willpower, which I tell people all the time, you can get sober, but only Jesus can make you free. You right. can have willpower, but only he brings real freedom from bondage and stuff. But, so, but we want our own understanding, our own intelligence to work things out. And so when you have to say, I have to detach from that and go and trust in what he says and does and kind of release those things, man, that is a, that is a place of vulnerability and faith. Yeah. And, and that's what you're talking about going yes. into those moments 
and and that's really a heart area that's the that's the area that's where you do heart checks is to say lord even when i don't understand why yep i'm i'm going to go with you because i do trust and and i really think too we have to understand that god lives from the perspective of eternity yeah and we are so shallow minded sometimes well most of the time i know i am and we live from the perspective of temporary mm -hmm. and temporary is so shallow compared to eternity and when you understand that he's looking at us through the lens of eternity you can relax in that that's right and i think that that brings me great peace yeah and i know that you trust those things yes so laura i'm gonna let's close in prayer see i haven't kept you too long today if you're listening or watching and i really want to encourage you today look through the lens of eternity um check your um attitude of joy today yeah. look at yourself today and say is my um am i happy which is something based on circumstances or um do i have joy which is actually a gift a fruit yeah. of the holy spirit it is it is something that the lord gives this is something that you can have all the time and that is not about circumstances it's something that the lord says i'm your source of joy and that means no matter what's going on in your life you can have that because that's who he is he's just like you can have peace that passes all understanding why because he's the prince of peace mm -hmm. and so today if you're needing that he's your source and i believe that he yes. can be your helper and give those things to you and um, so if you are needing prayer today for anything, please reach out to us. We are here for you. Um, if you need some supernatural joy, you probably need to call Laura. <laughs> <laughs> She's way better at that than I am, I think. Um, if you need some supernatural truth, probably call. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hopefully together we can help you. That's right. But anyway, Laura, why don't you close us out in prayer today? And I'm so thankful that you've listened today and believing that God is doing miracles in your life. Well, we're so thankful for you. We're so thankful, God, for your word. And we are so thankful, Father, for for your goodness to us. And God, you know who's hearing this podcast today, Lord. You know the circumstances that we walk through, Lord. But Lord, we have your word. We understand, Lord, that your joy, God, is our strength, Father. And we just ask today, God, that you would continually be with us, Lord, that you would continually order our steps. God, I pray, Father, that whoever hears this podcast today, God, that their ears, their eyes, their hearts would be open to hear your word, Father. I pray, God, that you, Lord, would continually minister to our hearts, God, that our hearts would be softened, Father, that you would continually begin to work in our lives, Jesus. God, we just thank you for what you're doing within us, Lord. God, I pray, Father, that we would have a hunger and, our th and a thirst for you like never before, God. Lord, we just honor everything that you're doing in our lives, God, in our ministries, Father. Lord, we just worship you, God. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.